looks like a picnic basket. <laughs> One of the most exciting PR packages I've ever received. And I've recently joined every girl in getting the Lululemon everywhere belt bag. being away unexpectedly for like about a week and a half. I went home for a long weekend and ended up staying a little bit longer. When I came into my apartment, I was met with my balcony door being wide open and there were bugs flying everywhere in my living room. At first I was like, was this a break in? And then I remembered, oh, I live way too high up for anyone to have been able to get in here. I must not have closed the balcony door properly, which is unusual for me because I always check the balcony door before I leave my apartment. Even if I'm just going to do errands, I always check it. But I didn't this time, I think because we had installed, my parents and I had installed my AC on the day that I left. So there was just a lot happening. So I spent my whole first day back here running to the hardware store, grabbing sprays and fly swatters. Ordered this on Amazon. I know it's a silly thing to maybe not like, but in my apartment, if I see critter crawlers, spiders, or anything like that, it just, it spikes up my anxiety to a really annoying level. And that's all I can focus on is, is the fact that I am not the only living thing here. <laughs> Anyways, it is what it is, but sometimes you just have these moments in life where you really don't want to have any adult responsibilities. And that was a day where I was like, I'm tapped out, like I need, I need out. I want someone else to deal with this kerfuffle. But alas, dealt with it I did. Spring summer vibes are fully here in the city. I have recently acquired some shoes for the spring summer season. Last year, I didn't buy any summer footwear. I think the only pair I bought were the white princess sneakers from Reebok. I have been due for like just sprucing up my summer shoes. This is one of the pairs I got from Winners. It's from a brand called Angel Alarson. Alarcon? Alarcon? I think these are such a, a cute summerified loafer. Looks like a picnic basket. <laughs> dress up, dress down. Picnic basket vibes continue with this pair that I got. It's a more of a white look, but they're kind of like in between a loafer and a sandal because there's no backing. This is from a brand called Napoleoni. Made in Italy, also from Winners. Or, no, sorry, Marshalls. Got from Marshalls. Same company, though. And then from Aldo, as more of like a regular, casual, everyday sandal, I got these guys right here. And one of the reasons I like these, aside from the fact that they're a really basic sandal, is the fact that it has some height to it. There's like a little bit of a wedge there, which gives you a little bit of height, but there's also a decent amount of support. So many times when I buy sandals that kind of look like these, they have like the, the smallest piece of like cardboard material. You pretty much feel like your foot's about to touch the ground, which in Toronto, when you're walking the streets of the city, not the vibe. So this kind of gives me some distance from the streets, you know? I just think that's a really stunning set of shoes for the spring summer. Also for an upcoming trip I have booked. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. There's also a little bit of PR that I wanna share with you guys. One of which is this package right here, which is probably one of the most exciting PR packages I've ever received because it's from one of my favorite brands ever. Do you see that or that? Ah. Indigo, the bookstore that you guys see me at all the time sent me a book. I feel like I've made it at this point. I'm just gonna wrap up my whole YouTube career. See you later guys. Have a great life. There's nothing more to do here. They sent me a copy of Iron Widow by, excuse my mispronunciation here, Zyron J. Zhao. I could be mispronouncing that, but I'll have a link to it down in the description box below. When I posted on my stories, I heard some incredible things from you guys about it. And this is the first book choice of a special book talk book club that is happening between or in collaboration with Indigo and TikTok. So this is the official Book Talk Book Club. First choice, I think this was May's pick. June's pick is being announced soon. Super fun, 
very honored to receive a copy. The cover truly is just magnificent too. I have a lot of respect for a sexy cover, let me tell you. Bills also sent me a little roller and a super multi-corrective eye cream that you can use on your brow bone, your outer corner, your eyelids. It also reduces puffiness. I actually just ran out of my eye cream or I'm about to, so this is going to be used very soon. Another PR package I received while I was gone is this beautiful beautiful candle from a fellow creator here on YouTube named Alexander Gator. This is a collaboration between Alexander Gator and Cardo Oset, which is a candle company. This is hand poured in Canada and the candle itself is just so beautiful. The packaging is gorgeous. I love this collaboration. I love Alexandra's videos too. She does really impressive makeovers like home decor makeovers so if you especially are a renter she's got some amazing hacks i love a good candle moment and i feel like this is a really good spring summer candle and they sent it to me in a basket full of fruit it's one of the most beautiful pr packages i've ever received so so grateful always whenever i'm sent something by a brand or by a small business it it really does mean the world and i just always feel honored like who who am i to be getting a book eye cream and a candle in the mail this is the self-care combo of my dreams and it's it's very sweet that um i'm considered for these things so just putting that out there is not lost on me how absolutely bizarre and cool and just fun that is i'm starving now though so i think it is time to go in the kitchen make some dinner do all the things I've got like a burst of energy at the end of the day. I love it, love to see it. Where was this energy like a couple hours ago when I was trying to do work? For dinner tonight, I am making leftovers from the HelloFresh meal that I made yesterday, which was a Mediterranean tortellini pasta dish with zucchini and roasted red peppers and onions and all the things, Parmesan, pesto. It was delicious, but what's even better is the fact that I get to kind of have a chill day with cooking today because I'm pretty much just doing leftovers. So no chopping, none of that. But yesterday's cooking session, I will say, was very therapeutic. And I do think when it comes to cooking, I'm realizing as I'm speaking that my AC is going off, it's too hot for me to turn it off right now. So bear with the background noise. But I want to say this like without being super fluffy fluffy because at the end of the day, sometimes we're in a time crunch and we just need to get food done and it's very mechanical and that's just the reality sometimes. But when you are are able to just slow it down, make it enjoyable, throw on some cooking music, chop and, and think about what you're chopping and, and just be in the moment a little bit. It is very therapeutic. It's a very calming activity and you can get a lot more out of it when you're wanting to, when you're going into it with the intent of it being something enjoyable rather than something that you just have to get scratch off your to-do list. I'm gonna make the second half of my tortellini pasta, which I used my food scale to measure precisely. So there's exactly another half that I'm doing here. I have been obsessed with my food scale as of late. It's great for if you like baking, um, Using a food scale is very precise. But I also like it for things like this where I'm like, am I making half the tortellini pasta? Why guess when I can measure? I mean, you can just guess. Probably an extra unnecessary step on my part. But wow, do I love a good precise measurement. Type A in me coming out. <laughs> One of the things I talked about in the newsletter this week regarding food is ancestral eats. And I challenged everyone on my newsletter to choose a meal from their past that they associate with their childhood or happy memories and make plans to recreate it this month. And I'm trying to think what mine is going to be. I kind of want to tackle pão doce, which is a Portuguese sweet bread. I have memories growing up of having it around spring Easter time. My neighbor would often bring us a loaf of pão doce and whenever it arrived, I remember all of us in my family just getting like really excited to dive into it. It's a very, um, I don't know, it's a, it's, a, it's a great little treat. So kind of want to try that out because I feel like it'd be fun to master it. And then I can be the girl who brings that to family occasions. I really want to get better or I guess even just like attempt to make some recipes that I, I think of when I think of childhood or 
very like significant or distinct occasions like Christmas and Easter time and family get togethers. Like there's just some of those treats that I think about like pandos, pilos, I think about natas, fish, I think about resois and bolos de bacalao, caldo verde and so many traditional Portuguese dishes that are really only done by my grandmother, sometimes my uncles, but yeah, I want I need to I need to learn some things. That being said, I would love to know what is an ancestral eat that you've always wanted to try making for yourself, recreating for yourself, whether it's your own, that's something from your own family history or something in another cuisine, another culture that you've always loved and wanted to try honoring by creating yourself. Okay, I'm gonna continue with my pasta making. Thank you. Dismiss. Alexa, dismiss. Cancel. Alexa, quiet. Alexa. Okay, that's what you got. Oh, that was brutal. Brutal. going out to vote. Very important to go do. The bodysuit and the ripped jeans are from Dynamite. I'll have them linked below. And I've recently joined every girl in getting the Lululemon everywhere belt bag. I think it's everywhere. Every day, everywhere. I really held off getting one of these for myself because I wasn't sure I would like it, but I've had it for just over a week now, week and a half. It is so handy. Even though everyone I see on the streets is wearing it, I can't, I can't argue with the fact that it is really nice to have my hands free and also not have something like super dangling because it's so close to my chest. It just feels like I'm, I'm taking with me less, which during the summer months is really nice because when you feel like you're, you got like a lot to deal with and you're hot, it's not a great combo. My personal favorite part of the bag is the fact that it has this back zipper. So this is where I keep credit cards, ID, cash, anything I need for payment. And then inside is actually quite roomy. I have a lip balm right now in here. This is my cousin's lip balm from the Health Nut shop. Lip butter in blood orange. Hand sanitizer, my keys, also with my Lululemon keychain. Some sort of reusable bag. Sometimes I guess I bring my sunglasses in here. But there's still room, it holds quite a bit. I'm actually gonna wear these. I also have a tissue in there in case I just start crying out of nowhere. I've been in an emotional streak lately. I don't know if you have ever experienced that. I never used to be a crier, but lately those tears will be falling. <laughs> and I'm like, why? Stop. I need, oh, I need my voter card. I can't show you this card at all because it gives away my address. I love doing one of these. Makes me feel like I'm about to go to the beach. Time to go. What a fun adventure for 9 a.m. I came back from voting and taking a walk, doing some errands in the city, and I was reminded yet again that I need to start doing more like straight in the morning walks around my neighborhood because it is really just so, uh, it's just such a great way to start the day with a walk outside. It gets your body moving, it gets you some fresh air. You need to do it more because it's amazing. I feel like the whole tone of my day has been really positive because of it. I have changed into leggings because I wanted to be comfy while working at my desk. But I'm done working and instead I'm going to do some waxing, which some would argue is work. <laughs> I'm gonna argue that. I've decided today that I'm going to sugar wax my arm hair. I've only ever done this once. I don't shave my arm hair. I have pretty dark arm hair. That's the European in me coming through. Doesn't really bother me, but I did it I think for the first time last summer 
And I did like how smooth it was for when you're wearing a lot of sleeveless tops. It's just like nice. And then also um, when you're doing like tanning creams or oils, it's just a little bit simpler to do it on a more blank canvas. But I'm gonna do it now because I don't know, I feel motivated to do it. And I feel like you kind of have to go do this when the mood strikes because seldomly do I want to put myself through this. Although I will say, not the most painful thing in the world. This kit comes with strips, which I do save these, and some wax, which I also probably should figure out how to make on my own. But again, I, I do sugar waxing so rarely that I don't mind buying it, but I do know it's pretty simple to make. I think that's just an excuse for being lazy. I really should <laughs> try making it myself. I also want to make sure I'm emphasizing here that you know what you choose to do with your body hair is your choice so do what you want to do with it remove it keep it shave it wax it don't do nothing with it trim it whatever it is i just melted my wax in the microwave and then i have a bucket of hot water here to place these strips in after i'm done using them because the great thing about sugar wax is it comes off with water so you can reuse these strips for the season um, by just removing the wax and hair and if you just let it soak in the hot water it'll remove really quickly and then you just rinse it dry them they're ready to go i like to start close to the wrist i find going smaller sections better Ooh, making progress making progress I'm gonna keep doing this, I'll report back. Okay, bear with me, arm one might be a little red, but in comparison to arm two, is it focusing? Oh wow, you can really tell the difference there. Ta-da! Hair is going up, and I'm gonna do the other arm. This is exactly why normal wax would be a pain. I just need water. It has been a few hours. I've eaten, I've showered, and I'm gonna do a little body lotion. I've still been loving this body lotion from Necessaire. It is their the body lotion. It's unscented, fragrance-free. This is one of the reasons I like it because it's a it's a great lotion to pair with um, an oil or if you have scented body wash, it's not gonna clash. But uh, this was the result of my arms. They feel very smooth. So mission accomplished. And I feel like this time around, I did a lot better of a job than the first time I did this. The sun is officially setting. I'm trying to figure out what book I wanna read next. And I would love your opinion. Stuck between these two babies. This first one is Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. She's a Canadian author. I have heard so many great things about this one. I think this is her debut novel. Yeah, a radiant debut as said by Emily Henry. And people have said that fans of Emily Henry will really enjoy this one. So I picked it up at Indigo because it was actually signed by the author because like I said, she's Canadian and I think she signed ones at the Eaton Center and the Bay and Bloor location and a few other Indigo locations. Or I could read Something Wilder, which is the latest Christina Lauren release. I'm borrowing this from my friend Maddie. Definitely going to read both of them, but <laughs> sometimes the order is hard to figure out. Whenever I've got a new book, I have to smell it because fresh book it's different. <laughs> 